So this piece of cardio equipment is probably the most recognizable in, in almost every gym around the world. The treadmill, it's great for low impact walking on an incline to a jog to a sprint. So I'm just gonna show you now how to set this up. When you first got the treadmill, you'll press start or quick start. Then we have various options on here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to increase the speed and we're just going to do it to a slow, steady walk. So maybe we're going to put that to around about 2.5 miles an hour. From there, we can either increase or decrease the incline. So if we want to walk uphill, we'll simply press the incline up button and we're going to take that up to level three. Studies show that walking on an incline can burn up to twice as many calories as you do when you're walking on a flat. And a treadmill is a great way for you to come in, warm up, cool down, or even do a full cardio-based workout. That's a demonstration of a walk. If we were going to go into a slight jog, we'll just put the treadmill up to about 5.3 miles an hour. But you'll just force you into a slight run. Once you've done that, it's really simple. You can either slow it down and go down to a slow walk again, or if at that point you want to stop the treadmill, just simply press the stop button, or in an emergency, pull the cord off, which will completely stop the treadmill right there. So this exercise is an incline Smith machine press. There's a couple of key changes that I'm going to make to that what I did when I had the bench flat. So again, lay back on the bench, have the bar just as it comes down, to the, about an inch above the nipple to where the chest goes. Again, get your hand position right. So from your shoulders, go directly up where my pinky is. That's where my thumbs are gonna go. And I'll grab all the bar. A lot of bars have ridges on, as you can see, a little smooth section on the bar. This is generally where you put your middle finger. So if your bar doesn't have that, take your shoulders up, place your pinky where that is, then grip the bar. Okay, so again, our elbow position. Our elbows are becoming slightly forward. They're not going wide. They're not going like a tricep. They're going just somewhere in between. And this is a massive thing. You must get your elbow position right on this. So we're gonna lock the bar off. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is I'm coming down. Unlike on a flat, I'm not taking the bar down to my chest. I'm gonna come about two or three inches above my chest. The reason for this is if I take that down now, you can see how I'm rolling my shoulders forward and that's just gonna put massive stress on my shoulders and lose the contraction on my chest. So we're gonna take it down to about two or three inches and then up four fifths of the way up and squeeze our chest. And again, we're really emphasizing that part. We're pushing, we're driving it up for that part. And I'm imagining I'm squeezing the bar and trying to bend the bar to get maximum contraction on the chest. So again, down, elbows are right, just about two inch above my chest, up to the sky and really squeeze that chest together. Imagine that I'm getting it up, I'm pushing through that part of my palm, my hands, and I'm trying to slide my hands together. So down, and I'm creating maximum contraction on my chest that way. And again, if you are new to this machine, please do use the stops which will prevent the bar from coming down and stop you in an emergency. Okay, so this exercise is a decline dumbbell press. And this bench is flat, so I want to create the decline. So to do this, I'm just going to take a 10 kilo plate, lift the edge of the bench up and place the plate underneath it. And it's putting on a very slight decline, which is enough. That's enough for the exercise that we're going to do. So as we're going down now, you can see I'm just on a decline. The one thing I'm always going to do is remember my elbow positions and my hand positions. So again, we're going to take them down to get the stretch on the pecs and then up and close that triangle again at the top every time. So just note my elbow position, have a very slightly forward and not engaging my, my front delts and my hand position as well.
and I'm squeezing every single rep. <sighs> Decline is, is not used that much in today's world. And a lot of people think that if you do a flat bench, you don't really need to, to do decline. But I don't know whether I or, uh, agree or disagree with that, but I still like to do a very slight decline in my chest workout. And it helps me get a, a great pump and overall shape and simmery onto my chest. Okay, now we're, we're onto my ultimate favorite machine in the gym. It's a Lion bench press machine. This is a Panatta machine and it's really old, but the motion, the, the movement is probably the favorite movement that I've got on any machine. Now, there's a lot of machines like this, Hammer Strength do a version, Cybex do a version. I'm gonna be a little bit um, biased here and tell you that the Panatta machine that we've got is by far the best movement, although people with other machines will disagree. But this is definitely a machine that you should definitely, definitely include in your chest workout. So on this one, you've got a little red button here, which allows you to determine how far this drops down. This is set perfectly for my height. So it's so remember on the flat, we go down and we let the bar touch our chest. This is what this is gonna do now. So we make sure that our feet are planted. And remember when we're doing an exercise, we're almost thinking that it's like a house, you start at the foundation. So we always make sure that our feet are in position and we work our way up. So we're in position now. We're gonna get the bars off the stops and take them up to the sky. Now, again, we never ever lock out because when I lock out at this point here, the stress is no longer in my chest. It's, it's all in my front shoulders. It's in my elbows. So we're only ever gonna go four fifths of the way out but we're really, really gonna make sure that we get a squeeze and a contraction on this. So I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna stop short of hitting them stops by about half an inch. And then up, I'm gonna hold the squeeze and I'm gonna imagine that I'm turning my pinkies in. So you can notice that by the position of these handles actually, but you're gonna go down and you're gonna go up and I'm pushing through. At this, I'm gonna show you, I'm pushing through that part there of my hand to really emphasize the contraction on the chest. And again, we're two seconds on the positive and we're four seconds on the negative. And we're holding the squeeze at four fifths of the lockout just for a split second. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. And if I haven't already told you, this machine is definitely one of my favorite machines in my gym or any gym that I've visited. Okay, so this is a variation of an inclined dumbbell press, but folks are more on the upper middle of the, of the chest. Bench is on about 45 degree angle. I'm not actually sitting on the seat. I'm leaning back on it. I'm making sure my shoulder blades are back. And on the dumbbells, we're gonna keep them locked together and we're gonna bring them facing that way like that. So you're seeing the lower part of the dumbbell towards your eyes and away from you, so towards your needs, the dumbbell's higher. Once we lower this down, we keep our elbows nice and tight coming in. We go down just to our chest there. And as we go up, we're pushing it back over and squeezing our chest. We'll come back down again and up. And as we're going down, we're breathing in and we're breathing out as we go up. As well as pushing, we're trying to squeeze them dumbbells together, which tightens the chest. So we're going down, up, and hold the squeeze for a split second. Come down in a controlled manner, about four second negative, up, and two seconds going up again, and back down again. Make sure you keep your hands in the same position as you're going up and down in that one. That one targets the upper part of the inner chest, and it's a part of the chest that just slightly gets neglected if your form isn't quite right on various other exercises. So the next exercise is gonna be using the machine, the pec fly machine. This machine's universal. You can use it here for your, for your rear delts or you can use it for your pec. We're gonna use it for our pec right now. So on this machine, 
The first thing what you, you see is the handles. For me, these handles are a little bit low. I like my hands a little bit higher. So I'm gonna hold it there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna imagine that I've got that barrel inside my hands. I'm gonna imagine I've got that barrel inside my arms, which is gonna create the perfect shape and angle of my elbows and push them together. Now what I'm gonna do is as, if you note my feet position, I'm putting them behind me slightly. And then as I take this back, I'm gonna lean my chest forward to really emphasize that stretch. And I'm gonna bring my chest up to the sky as I close it in. So lean forward. So back, as I'm coming up, I'm pushing my chest to the sky to contract it. Lean forward again. I'm pushing my chest to the sky every single time and that'll really help get that stretch on that chest. But don't forget to make sure that as you're coming up with it, you're bringing your chest to the sky to really pop it and push with this part of your, hand, your hands there. So as you can see, I'm pushing and I'm almost opening my hands up to get that squeeze, but I'm making sure my arms are going nice and wide again there. And back up again there. And that really causes a stretch and a contraction. It's a great exercise. So this isn't seen in every gym around the world, but it's an absolutely fantastic piece of cardio equipment. It's called the Stairmaster, and it can be absolutely brutal, but so rewarding. You see a lot of professional athletes, particularly bodybuilders, bikini girls, who absolutely love this for the, for the simple fact that it puts a good emphasis on your glutes while you're doing it. So when you do get on this Stairmaster, just press the green button in front of you. What that'll do, it'll release the brake off the revolving staircase. Now, the staircase will move depending on the user's weight. And all you're gonna do is by turning the level up is release the brake a little bit more, which will allow the revolving staircase to revolve that little bit faster. Ashley uses this daily, so she's a seasoned pro on this machine and she loves it. There's various ways you can use it. You can use it a single step at a time, or she could go on a two steps at a time. So now her feet will miss one tread and take two steps up. You could make it even more advanced by doing a glute kickback as you're stepping up the steps. As I said, this is an absolutely amazing piece of kit and if your gym's got one, you're a really lucky person, so make the most of this. Don't be afraid of it. Start off if you can do one minute and then work your way up to two minutes. And what sometimes we do is we'll do a period of time on this and we'll then put somebody off it, back onto the treadmill and then come back on again. So that way they can work the wheel to a level. Uh, Ashley's currently doing around about one hour solid on this. Now, myself, I'll probably do about three or four minutes. It's a hard piece of equipment but so rewarding and so, so, so beneficial to anybody. So I would definitely recommend that you definitely give this a go, give it a try, don't be afraid of it. And just to finish this one off, Ashley's gonna turn the speed up and she's gonna show you now how she can get into a run. And just note this fact as well, on this particular Stairmaster, in the top left-hand corner, there's a picture of a fan. If she presses the picture of the fan, that'll blow cold air at her face. So she's gonna get into a run. As you do get more experience on this, you'll be able to leave go of the handles. But I would recommend you always stay within a balance. As you can see now, Ashley's actually into a run where her arms are moving as well. As her arms are moving, she's burning more calories because more parts of her body are moving. Again, once you're finished on the Stairmaster even, again, press the big red button in front of you and that'll apply the brake to the staircase and allow you to safely dismount